guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I want to talk about something that every watch collector has asked himself at least once or twice, and that is, how do you tell if a Rolex is fake? Now, I've come up with a list of six ways, they're not foolproof, but six ways you can help tell if the Rolex you're looking at is fake. Now, in honor of this video, of course, I'm wearing my Rolex Mariner 16610. Now, as I said, this is a list of six techniques and ways you can tell if a Rolex is genuine or fake. However, they're not foolproof, and I do want to warn you guys that replica Rolexes have been getting really, really good over the past few years. Unfortunately, due to the controversial nature of this video, I'm going to be turning off comments down below just because a lot of people are pro-replica or against replicas, and I just don't want any arguments in the comments. But feel free to drop me a message if you have any questions. Anyway, guys, so what are the six ways you can tell uh, if a Rolex is genuine or fake? Now, the first way you can tell is by looking at the Cyclops. The Cyclops is the little magnifier on top of the date. Now, a genuine Rolex should magnify the date by 2.5 times its original size. A lot of replicas do not replicate this, and uh, it's quite a bit less than 2.5 times. However, some of the good ones have managed to get this right. But it is one of the ways that you can take a look at the piece in front of you and judge if it's real or fake. The next thing we can look at is the movement. Now, without opening up the watch, if you have a modern Rolex movement, there's an easy test that can usually tell you if it's real or fake. And that is when you pull out the crown and turn the crown upwards, the hands should move clockwise. This is typical of Rolex movements and calibers. If it's using a Chinese movement or an Etta clone or even a real Etta, the hands will move anti-clockwise. The Rolex movement will always move clockwise in a modern Rolex. However, be aware that the, uh, the guys that make fakes or the replicators have made clone Rolex movements. This was about two or three years ago they first started coming out, and they're only in the really high-end replicas. Now, if you are holding one with a clone Rolex movement, the hands will indeed move clockwise. However, these are very rare fakes, so it is usually a good judge. It's the first thing I do. If the hands move clockwise when you move the crown upwards, it's usually a pretty good sign that what you're holding is a real Rolex. Next, we can look at the clasp. Now, I'll put a picture right up here so you can see what I'm talking about. But genuine Rolex clasps are perfect. And for some reason, this is something that a lot of fakes can get right. In fakes, the little crown on the clasp is usually either a little bit crooked or a little bit too uh, raised. The construction of the clasp should involve the crown perfectly melded into the metal. Now, this is a little bit hard to use as a tell if you haven't held many real Rolexes, but there generally is a difference, and it's how well the crown has been embedded into the clasp of the watch. Next up, we are gonna talk about the rehot, or the flange ring of the watch. Now, there's two tells here that you guys can use to judge, between a genuine piece and a replica piece. Now, the first thing is pretty easy, and that is Rolex usually engraves their names on the inside of the rehot. Now, regarding the rehot, uh, as I said, Rolex engraves the word Rolex, Rolex, Rolex around it. Many fakes have this as well, but the big tell here is the alignment of the word Rolex. From 12 to 6, the X in the word Rolex should line up with the hour markers. And from 6 to 12, the letter R should line up with the hour markers. Once again, a very, very good fake can replicate this as well, but it's just one of the many tells that you can use to see right off the bat if it's a real or fake Rolex. 
Another tell, including the Rehot, is the angle at which it's made. A lot of the replicas, uh, the angle is a little bit more bowl-shaped. And I'll see if I can put a picture up so you guys can see the difference. And the angle of the flange Rehot ring is another decent tell. The fifth way you can tell if it's a genuine or fake modern Rolex is if it's got a micro-etched crown at the 6 o'clock position. Rolex micro etches a crown right at the six o'clock marker on the crystal. And it's very, very hard to see with the naked eye. You kind of have to tilt the watch to get it right at the right angle or maybe even use a loop. Once again, top grade replicas have this as well, but not all of them do. So it's another very, very good way to tell if the piece you're holding is real or a replica. And number six, and this might seem a little superfluous, but it's definitely true, Rolex only releases perfect pieces. So if there's anything like a slightly misaligned text or something is even a millimeter off, then you should be suspect, especially if the watch is new. Rolex does not let anything slip through the cracks, so a slightly misaligned ma hour marker or a little bit of dust on the dial or just the text that might be a micro millimeter off is usually a pretty good tell. Now, as I've said, these are only guidelines and many of the replicas can fake all these as well, but it's usually a pretty good way to tell if it's real or fake, if it has all of these security features. A lot of replicas might have the rehot right, but might not have the clone movement, or they might have the clone movement, but the clasp might be off, or it might have the micro etch crown, but something is slightly wrong in the dial. So these are six ways that you should tell altogether if a watch is real or fake. However, the only real way to tell guys is to bring it to a Rolex authorized AD and have them open up the case back so they can check the movement. This is just designed to help you guys tell off the bat if it's real or fake. But once again, if you have any doubts, bring it to an AD. All right, guys. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and please give it a thumbs up if you did. It really does help me out. And don't forget to join my Instagram account. That's at Federico Talks Watches. I'll leave a link in the description below. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any more content. I come out with about four videos a week, and you wouldn't want to miss those. Anyway, guys, once again, thank you so much for sticking around for another episode of Federico Talks Watches, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.